Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, I'm going to show you a way that you can get more information when you're hitting problems inside of Power BI Desktop. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right. When you get errors inside of Power BI Desktop, it can be frustrating, right? And sometimes those error messages, regardless of what application you're in, may not give you enough information, right? They may be just generic messages saying, hey, something went wrong, or hey, you know, unable to perform action, something of that nature, right? And it, it makes you mad. I guess you're just gonna have to call support to figure it out, right? Well, if you're inside a Power BI desktop, there is something you can do to get some more information. It could be a little scary, but I'm gonna show you how to do it and what kind of the thought process that I have when I go through this. All right, enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and see how this works. All right, so here's the scenario. I've got Power BI desktop. You can see down in the bottom here, the last time this data was refreshed was on August 4th, that was a really long time ago, but the person who created this report came to me and said, look, I'm trying to refresh this just inside of Power BI Desktop and I get this error. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and do refresh. And it's gonna ask me for credentials. Well, of course it's gonna ask for credentials. So let me go in and put those credentials in because I know what they are. Uh-oh. So it says we couldn't authenticate with the credentials provided. Please try again. This error itself is actually pretty descriptive, right? The password's probably wrong. But in some cases, you may want to get more information like, well, what's actually going on? So I'm going to use this as the example of the error message. We're going to get a little more details on. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel this. This is obviously going to fail. And what we want to do is go over to file. Of note, I'm using the preview ribbon bar inside of Power BI Desktop. As of the recording of this video, it's in preview. And so you may be using the old ribbon bar. So it may look a little different. So just be aware of that. All right, so I'm gonna to go to File, I'm gonna to go to Options and Settings, and then go to Options. Then I'm gonna come down to Diagnostics, and here we can say Enable Tracing. And when I do that and hit OK, let's reproduce the error again. So typically when we're doing tracing, you want to reproduce the error while the tracing's enabled. That's how it's gonna capture that information. So let's go ahead and hit Refresh. It's gonna ask me for credentials again. We're gonna go and we're gonna say, Oh, got that error again, right? So my password's probably wrong, but we're gonna go look at more details here. So, and this even tells us a little bit more credentials are required, so that's cool. All right, so we reproduce the error, now what? If we go back to options and settings, go into options, go back to diagnostics, and we'll see a link here, it says open crash dump and traces folder. And when we do that, it's gonna take us right to where those files are. The other thing I wanna call out here from an options perspective is that you could actually do crash dump collection. So a crash dump is when the application actually crashes and goes away, right? And so you wanna do more diagnostic information on what that's gonna be doing. And so you can enable crash dump collection as far as you know capturing that to dig in further. If you know how to go through a crash dump, awesome. I love that you're able to do that. Uh, crash dumps are something that I really enjoy going through. Patrick, not so much. So just know if you do call support because of some issue, they may ask you to enable that. We've got our folder open. Let's go take a look and see what's inside. So you're gonna get a bunch of different files here. So first off, let's start with this PBI desktop files. This is the main trace file for Power BI desktop itself. And so if there's some issue with Power BI desktop, chances are it might be in that file. You're also gonna see a bunch of mashup container files. So this is the Power Query engine, right? The mashup engine. And you're gonna have a trace file for each of the containers that were spun up as part of doing what Power Query does. And because we were doing a refresh operation and that failed, that's where it's gonna be because that's Power Query doing that operation. The other thing you're gonna notice here is that all of these files have zero kilobytes, which means they're empty, right? Well, what you need to do is after you've reproduced the error, in order for those items to get written to disk, we have to close Power BI Desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say no, we don't wanna save. And now we see that these files have data inside of it. So I mentioned before the Power BI Desktop file will have general information. So if something outside of Power Query, go check that file. In this case, we know it is Power Query, so we wanna focus on the mashup container files. So where do we go from here? 
from a troubleshooting perspective and the way I attack things, I look at, all right, what's the biggest one, right? Because there's there's a bunch of container files here. My gut feeling is going to be go look at the biggest one. That's probably the one we want to go after. If that doesn't pan out, we'll have to go through them one by one just to see what's going on. So gut feel here, we've got one file here that's 748 KB versus everything else, which is only double digits. Let's go and open that one. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code to open this up. You can use the editor of your choice. Maybe it's Notepad, if you're Patrick. All right, go and open with code. And we're gonna see a bunch of stuff here. So this file can be very intimidating, right? But let's just break it down, right? Just take it step by step. So first off, we're gonna see that we've got matchup traces here. It's gonna give you uh, an item in terms of what type of log entry this is or what type of trace entry this is. And so we can see we've got information. You're also gonna see warnings, errors, things of that nature, right? And so we hit an error. So what do you think we should go after? We probably wanna look for an error, right? That's probably the first thing to start. In terms of how I go after these files, we know that we hit the error, we reproduce the error, we didn't do anything else, and then we close down Power BI Desktop. And so I typically go to the end of the file, right? So we want to turn off the tracing as close as we can to when we reproduce the error, and then it's probably at the end. And you can see here there's a lot of lines. If you look over on the right on the preview, there's a ton of lines. So how do I even go find this? Let me just go down to the bottom of the file and we'll start working our way up, right? Because that was the latest entry that occurred. So let's go ahead and go down. All right, so we're at the end and right away, we, the very last entry we have is error, followed by a couple of warnings and some more errors. So that's good, right? I mean, it's not good, but this is what we're looking for. And so in, the thing I like about Visual Studio Code is it's gonna highlight other things so we can immediately see other errors and we can see a couple things. So there's an action here. Let me scroll over a little bit. All right, so we've got this evaluation container main exception handler, handle exception. We see all these other exceptions, some stream message. Eh. And then the other errors that we had here, so line 259 and then 257, we can see that we've got a SQL connection open and then authorization error. So that's really what we're going after, right? And so once we've narrowed down the error, we wanna look for you know what is the action and then what's the detail of the message. Typically from an error perspective, this is a .NET application, so we're gonna look for something called an exception. The exception's gonna have the underlying message. So what's really great here is that if you get a generic error message from you know the the UI or the dialogue, sometimes that's the frustrating part. Is like, look, you didn't even uh, you told me and something went wrong. Great, what was it? Right? The message of the exception will usually give you more information. That's what I'm going after. So let's scroll over a little more. So this is this is our line actually. Let's put this into Notepad so we can maybe see it a little better with Word Wrap. So we can see our authorization error. We can see our resource path. That's our connection string, right? So that's our database and our server. And then we can see the exception itself. So the exception was a SQL exception, which I would expect. And then the message itself is login failed for user. This is a SQL error, right? So this means that our password was either wrong or our username is not right. And so in this case, this is the raw error message. We didn't get that in the UI. The UI just gave us a more friendly message saying, hey, authorization didn't succeed. So, but imagine if this was a generic error message and you wanted to go get more information, you could come look at this exception. And what I'm looking for here is that pointer to what's wrong. And then I can go look at that, right? And so now I know it's a SQL error. My password's probably wrong. Patrick probably didn't tell me what the new password was. And so now I've got to go figure that out. All right, so now that we're armed with that, we know that our password's wrong. We can go in, we can correct the error message, come back in to Power BI Desktop. We're done with this trace information. So the other thing you want to make sure is that you turn off the tracing once you're done. Otherwise, you're going to leave this on and these files are just going to grow. All right, so let's come back into File, Options, Options, go back to Diagnostics, and then uh, Enable Tracing is already disabled here, which is great. And then we'll hit OK. Another item I wanna point you to and just touch on a little bit that can give you even more information if your issue is from a Power Query perspective is the new diagnostics that are available inside of Power Query itself. So this is a preview feature, so make sure that you go to preview features and you check the box for query diagnostics and then go ahead and restart Power BI Desktop, otherwise you won't see this. 
So what I want to do is go into transform data. And there's a couple things that you can do here. One is you can actually go and debug an individual query, or we can actually debug the entire Power BI desktop itself, like the actual full refresh process. And so if we go to tools, we can say start diagnostics and or you can do diagnose step, things of that nature. I'll have links down in the description below to documentation for how this all works so that you can go into more details for that. So generally what we're gonna do though is I'm gonna say go to start diagnostics. In this case, I wanna do a refresh preview. So let's do refresh all. And so again, what you wanna do is you want to turn start the tracing, reproduce the problem, and then stop the tracing. And so now it went through and refreshed all the previews. Let's go to tools, we'll do stop diagnostics. And what it's gonna do is you'll see these items down below. So if I go to the main item, the, not the one that says detailed, you'll see that this actually goes through and shows us what's actually happening. So we see data refresh, we see the different operations that are part of the items that are being evaluated. You can see that this is a CSV file name. So these are the parameters that are going through. And then we can scroll down and see what's actually going on here. The query itself is the item that's over on the left. And so data refresh is the query and it's all the steps that it went through and you can see what actually happened, how long it took, if there were any problems, you know, what's, what's actually going on here. And then on the detailed table here, you can actually go through and get way more details on what's actually happening. So if we come down to sales territory, which is one of the SQL tables, we can come through, but you can go through and identify information of what's going on by step. The other thing you can start doing is once this data is in your model, you can actually start visualizing stuff on top of it. The documentation shows you how you can do some of that. So definitely check that out. This is a feature that can help you go a little deeper into the steps inside of Power Query without having to maybe go to those trace files. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. Have you used the trace files? Have you used the new query diagnostics items? Was it helpful? Did it, is there something missing that you would wanna see in it? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.